thank you, and thank you, Chairman DeFazio, Chairman Lawson, and Ranking Member Graves for holding this hearing today. My name is John Samuelson, International President of the Transport Workers Union, representing over 150,000 members in the USA and the Caribbean. In the aviation industry, our members work as mechanics, flight attendants, ramp workers, pilot instructors, airline dispatchers, and fleet service workers. Frontline aviation workers are responsible for maintaining our air safety and security system. We often have the best view of airline safety gaps, so giving all of us the opportunity to share our experience and recommendations is very important. Today, I'd like to highlight two important safety issues. Legally, the FAA requires that all U.S. flagged commercial aircraft be maintained to the same standard. However, the FAA has actually exempted maintenance work done outside the United States from many safety standards. The result is now a two-tier system, a two-tier safety system that encourages airlines to offshore more and more work, introducing more and more risk into our aviation system. Foreign repair, system, foreign repair stations are exempt from regulations requiring mandatory security and background checks for workers, risk-based safety and security evaluations for facilities, drug and alcohol testing, unannounced FAA inspections, and FAA certification standards for mechanics and technicians. Congress has already directed the FAA and the DOT to address several of these safety gaps twice in the past decade. Compliance with these mandates are years overdue. FAA delays led to a boom for foreign repair stations. The number of these facilities has grown by more than 30% in just the past four years. There are now more than 900 FAA certified foreign repair stations, including 200 that have been approved since 2017. The amount of maintenance work being performed at these stations with lower safety standards is already extremely high with coordinated efforts underway right now to increase those numbers. DOT data shows that three leading U.S. airlines, that the three leading U.S. airlines, all sent about 30% of their maintenance work to foreign facilities. U.S. mechanics, technicians, and pilots are increasingly alarmed by the incompetent work and often nefarious actions performed on aircraft outside of the United States of America. Their discoveries have included critical engine components held together with tape and wire, mid-flight cabin depressurization caused by incorrectly installed exterior door parts, aircraft covered with flammable paint, drug smuggling in aircraft noses, wheel wells, avionics, and laboratory panels. The country with the most FAA-certified foreign repair stations is China, and that, represented, that represents significant cyber and other security questions. This unlevel playing field for safety regulations is also costing American jobs. More than 8,200 aircraft maintenance jobs left the country in recent years. The job loss is caused by regulatory loopholes that allow airlines to cut costs by diminishing safety. We often hear that airlines do not compete on safety but right now, that's exactly what they're doing. Congress and the administration have to live up to this ideal by immediately closing all the loopholes that encourage moving this important maintenance work outside of the country. I'd also like to highlight another problem, which was just touched on by President Bassani, um, and that's cabin air quality. The atmosphere surrounding aircraft at 40,000 feet above sea level is too thin to breathe. So modern aircraft heat air from around the wings and over the engines and then compress that air before circulating it into the cabin. These nerve agents are absorbed by both inhalation and through the skin. Repeated or prolonged exposure to these agents, like that endured every day by flight attendants and frequent air travelers, can have devastating health effects. These incidents are being reported more and more, often now because of rising public awareness and because of trade union advocacy. Just three days ago, a commercial plane made an emergency landing because of a fume event that made passengers and crew alike sick. Aircraft aren't even equipped with sensors to alert the crew when fume events are occurring. This makes reporting and responding to these events 
extremely difficult. I want to say thanks to Representatives John Garamendi and Pete Stauber for introducing the Cabin Air Safety Act. It directly addresses the health and safety concerns presented by these toxic fume events. The TW fully endorses this legislation, and we hope the committee will take action on it soon. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify. Again, looking forward to questions.